Uh, Jesus, you are our light, you are our life, and you are our strength, our rock, our power. And uh, you're the one that has uh, given us life through your death and resurrection. Our God, you have a word that you have spoken to your people. <clears throat> you have recorded it, and it is what guides us into the fullness of life that we might be effective servants in you. And so I'm going to do my best to deliver what you've given to me. And uh, I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to release from inside me through the camera into the hearts of your people that are watching the things that you want to say to them. So Lord, this is your moment. <clears throat> I'm nothing more than a service, a servant and a mouthpiece. So I'm asking that you would be honored in the things that we do now. Through Christ I pray, amen. So I'm going to begin today with God and Corona as I talk to you uh, with a quote that tells us really where we're at in the times that we're in. <clears throat> uh, you may have heard this week, Governor Andrew Cuomo, who is a leader over the New York State, and they've had tremendous tragedy there. And uh, in a, re a reporting uh, conference, um, a news conference, he was asked about the plateauing of uh, the corona, the things that have happened there in the state. And this is a quote from him. He told reporters on Monday that the number of cases is down, and here's why it is down. Because we brought the numbers down. God did not do that, said Cuomo. Faith did not do that, said Cuomo. Destiny did not do that, he stressed. A lot of pain and suffering did that. And so you have Andrew Cuomo, who is leading the state of New York as the governor, and he was very direct, saying that, yes, we're making progress in this time of this terrible virus, but I want you to know, people, God had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. And when I heard that, it just made me a bit uneasy for Governor Cuomo, but we'll let God sort that out. You and I are in a time when there are voices that are telling us the way forward from this crisis. And what I want to do today is I want to give you what I believe is God's voice. Now, when I say that, that makes me hesitate even saying it. I'm reserved in saying it. Anybody that would stand and say, I'm going to speak for God, that is a fearful place to be because God <clears throat> is going to hold me accountable for the things I'm about to tell you. But I'm going to try to lead you in the voice of truth, in the things that God wants to say in this time of confusion, time when there is truth being mingled with lies, and uh, God's people need to hear His voice. And for me, the voice of God comes through His Word. I need, in, in all my years of walking with God, I've been with God a long time following Christ, I have never heard the audible voice of God. Some people have. <clears throat> Thank God for them. Thank God for their testimonies. I never have. But I have heard the voice of God. Every time I open His Word and I hear Him speak through His Word, it's the voice of God. And I am confident in the voice of God, and I want to share that with you. Also, some of you have been following uh, at 3 o'clock on Thursdays on our Facebook page. I release my just a few thoughts every week, sharing uh, what I believe God is saying to me about this whole corona crisis. So some of you may want to tune in there this week on Thursday, 3 o'clock. <clears throat> It'll be released, but if you're not available at 3, that, there'll be other opportunities. It'll be up on the Facebook for you to look at. So I'm going to prepare us today uh, to be a people that work in the ways of God, uh, that people that are ready for eternity uh, in the present, eternity when God calls us to the place that we'll live forever, and to be able to sort through those voices of truth. This is what I know. God wants His people to walk by faith, to walk by faith, not by fear. God does not want His people being afraid. God wants His people living in strength and confidence in who He is. 
and so that we can be the voice to the people that are struggling to find their way through. And this I am sure of. In the time of this crisis, God is speaking. God is wanting to get the attention of America. God is calling us back to Him. God is calling us away from voices that say in this crisis that He has no place in it. That He has nothing that He is doing. God is calling us away from that. He's trying to get our attention. He's trying to wake us up. And I'm hoping that I can be a part of that. So when I say God wants us to walk by faith and not fear, here's what I'm talking about. And this comes from a leader back in the 19th century. He was a very godly man and uh, did tremendous things by the faith of God. Here's what he says about faith. Faith has nothing to do with feelings. Faith has nothing to do with feelings or with impressions or with improbabilities or with outward appearances, if we desire to couple them with faith, those things I just mentioned, if we desire to couple them with faith, then we are no longer resting on the Word of God. Because faith needs nothing of the kind. Faith rests on the naked Word of God. When we take Him at His Word, the heart is at peace. That's what I'm talking about when I say God calls us to walk by faith, not by fear. It's not our feelings. It's not our impressions. It's not our probabilities. It is the voice of God and what he is calling his people to. So I'm going to give you five things today. Five things that I believe are the voice of God in the midst of this corona crisis. <clears throat> now, are there more things? Sure there are. But I'm going to give us five things that I believe will guide us and help us as a church family, as the people of God, to walk, to live by faith in God and not in fear. <clears throat> so the first one that I want to give to us is God wants us to know that all diseases will be present until Jesus returns. This is nothing that has caught God off guard. And we shouldn't be surprised as we walk by faith, as we walk in truth. There have been diseases in the past. There is a disease in the present. And there's going to be diseases in the future until Jesus returns. And the reason for that, we need to understand why. <clears throat> the reason for that, we're told, goes all the way back to the beginning when God tell, and His Word tells us that our first mother and our first father made a decision. And the Bible says it this way. But God said in that Genesis 3, 3 account, God said to Adam and Eve, you shall, not, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it. If you do, you're going to die. And the moment that Adam and Eve said, we know better than God does, and we're not going to follow the ways of God. We're going to ignore them. And they ate of that fruit. The moment that that happened until present, <clears throat> there was a release of death into the perfect created order of God. Not because God did it. Because the people of God chose it. And the people, once they chose that, they embedded in the DNA of all of us from the time that they ate that fruit till the present, there is a brokenness that has come into God's world and that brokenness includes diseases. And until Jesus returns, disease will be a part of our world. Genesis 3.3 explains that. And then in Genesis 3.6, it tells us, so when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, the tree was to be desired to make one wise. Now, she's not hearing the voice of God anymore. She's not hearing truth. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to Adam, who was with her, and he ate. This is the explanation for disease. This is where it comes from. This is where it started. There was a brokenness released into the world from that moment on. And so God tells us that the things that we're experiencing 
Every part of our genetic code with all of its diseases, death has come over life in this creation. And uh, God said it will be a part of our world. So we're not surprised that this coronavirus has come. But that's not the end of the story. God is also the one that is the voice of truth that is rescuing his people and he's giving us a way through. But let me now make another statement that is really controversial in some circles. Some people are teaching today in the midst of this corona and outside of it that the death of Jesus Christ has fully eradicated disease from the life of the believer, of the follower of Christ. People have said that if you're a follower of Christ and you have enough faith, then you shouldn't be experiencing disease and death in your life. People are saying that. It's being taught that way. I want you to know that the voice of God tells us, this is my second thing I want to say, God wants us to know that death and the resurrection of Jesus does not fully reverse our broken world because of human choice. We need to understand that. I don't want God's people misled. I don't want God's people because there have been many people during this corona time that death has come. And I don't want God's people living with this idea that, you know what, I died because I didn't pray enough. I died because I didn't have enough faith. I died because I didn't hear correctly the voice of God. Something went wrong. I don't want that guilt on the weight of uh, the shoulders of people. Who among us, you're not looking at the guy that's ever going to say this, who among us ever wants to claim that I'm the guy, I'm the gal that has enough faith? Who wants to say that you've got enough faith within you, that your faith is somehow superior to the place that you can claim these things? Who wants to claim that among us? I thank God for his grace. I thank God that he helps me. There are times my faith is weak. It's not strong. I don't ever want to be the person that says to you that I'm the one that has this superior faith. And so I want you to hear the voice of truth, the voice of God, that the death and resurrection of Jesus does not fully reverse our broken world because of human choice. And if that is true, If that is uh, accurate with the voice of truth, the word of God, I've got some questions for you that you're going to need to answer to me. First of all, if God is going to, in the death of Jesus Christ, uh, eradicate all disease and all sickness from our life uh, all the time, if God's going to do that, you need to answer this for me. Explain to me then why very godly people that follow Jesus, strong in their faith, Why do they have car accidents that take their life? God didn't design a world that had car accidents. He designed a perfect world. But when Adam and Eve chose that they were going to follow their own course, not God, and they released these things into our world, when that happened, you have car accidents. So if the death of Jesus is going to eradicate uh, all diseases and all sickness from our life fully, all the time, why are there car accidents? Why are there tsunamis that take life? Why are there tornadoes? Why are there people that fall and it causes their death? Why are there structure fires? Why are there untimely deaths? All these things are a part of a broken world. So if God chose, as some say, that God through the death of Jesus was going to pull out, that there would be no more sickness in the life of the believer, then why do these other evidences of a broken world still exist? Why, as some would say, that when Jesus came and he walked on the earth with us, fully God, fully man, when Jesus walked among us, as some would say, that he healed everyone when he was here. And that's the evidence that we can be fully healed in the life of Jesus. Why then did you come, do you have the account of John chapter 9 or excuse me, John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, when Jesus, Jesus was at the pool of Bethesda and he healed one among the many that were sick there. How does that align with the word of God? If you're going to say that in Jesus Christ, all of this has been fully removed from this current world. How are you going to align that with the life of Jesus in John chapter 5? How are you going to align that with what Paul says of Timothy in 1 Timothy 5.23? 
In 1 uh, Timothy 5.23, Paul tells Timothy, you need to take a little wine for your stomach's sake and for your sicknesses. Now, Paul had the ability to heal because we know that. We saw it in the Word of God. But Timothy wasn't fully healed. At least that's what the Word of God tells us. What about Trophimus, which was a companion of Paul that he left at Miletus? And Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20, that he left him there and he was sick. And what, is it, what about Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14, where the, Paul tells us of Ephesians that our full inheritance in Jesus Christ doesn't await us in this life. It awaits us in the time when we go into the very presence of God. Our full inheritance, inheritance waits us there. People, I want you to hear the voice of truth in this whole tsunami crisis, or tsunami, corona crisis, in this corona crisis, when there's people sometimes that have lost the, the struggle with life and death has come, that even in that moment that Jesus is still our God, the faith can still be strong and our hope can still be strong because our hope is not in the things of this life. Ultimately, it's in the things of the life that awaits us where there will be no brokenness, there will be no disease, there will be no car accidents, there will be no falls, tsunamis, tornadoes, structure fires, it'll be gone. And that is the promise of our God. Now, don't misunderstand me. Some of you are going to misunderstand what I'm trying to say. Am I saying that our God doesn't heal people? Of course he does. Our God heals people. God honors the prayers of people. Should we pray for healing? We should pray for healing. We should cry out to God for miracles. Does God work miracles? Of course God works miracles. Our God is a miracle working God. Does God rescue people from the, the verge of death and, and off of their deathbeds? Of course he does. Is there evidence that God even raises the dead? Of course he does. There's evidence of God raising the dead. I'm not saying that our God doesn't do any of those things. I'm saying this to us. The voice of truth in this corona crisis, we need to know that there are times in the, in the mind of God that none of us can understand. It's far too advanced for any human mind to put together there are times that very godly people that have served and honored the living God are going to lose their struggle with life and death is going to come and then they're going to open their eyes into the forever with Jesus in the life they were designed for. So God wants us to know that the death and the resurrection of Jesus does not fully reverse our broken world because of human choice. But there's all the time the evidence that the world of God is permeating into this broken world. And this hope that comes in Jesus is available to all people. And there's evidence that God is beginning to reverse this brokenness. And there'll be a day, oh, people of God, can't you just wait for the day? There'll be a day when God will lift us out of this brokenness. And he will lead us into a place where it'll be whole always forever. That's our God. But we don't get all of it right now. That's the voice of truth. So that's the second thing I wanted to say. The third thing I want to say is God has spoken that we should not be people that are afraid. We should be people that fear only him. We're not afraid of the coronavirus. We're not afraid of the things that are happening as a, we see this crisis in our world. We're not a people that are afraid. Now, do we respect and honor our medical personnel and the things they tell us to do? We do. Look here. The place is empty. We got, we got things spread out because we're honoring those in authority over us and we're following the advice of these gifted people that God has given to us to guide us and lead us in this time and we're thankful for them. And so we, we respect this, but we're not afraid of it. God wants us to know we don't fear anything in this life but God. There's nothing else to fear. Jesus said it so well in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Jesus said, do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear God who can destroy both body and soul in hell. God said, that's who you fear. 
That's who you're afraid of. God doesn't want his people walking in fear. He wants us walking in the strength and the confidence of who he is. He wants us speaking this to other people in their life. God wants us bold. There's, this is a time not for fear. This is a time for boldness. This is a time when the people of God rise to the surface and we reveal who we are. We reveal who our God is. We reveal that our God is fully in control of his world. God is not uh, wondering what he's going to do with this corona. God is not wondering the way through. God knows the way through. God knows exactly what he's going to do. You see, God is overseeing all of his world like he always does. And God is leading his people in faithfulness. God is going to lead us through this time. He's going to lead this ministry through this time. God is going to do the things that he always does. He's a good God. He's got his plan in place. And nothing will stop that plan. Jesus said, don't be afraid of the things that you see. Don't be afraid of the things, the voices sometimes that you hear. Don't be afraid of those things because they have no power over you. The things that have power over you, the one that has power over you is the living God because he is the one that sees our eternal being within us and he knows that this eternal part belongs to him and we can either follow Christ or we can be separated from ever, forever from our God. People, this is who we fear. We need to speak this message Church, it's a time to be bold. It's a time to be speaking. It's a time to be praying with a fervency of what God has called us to and open the door, opening doors for us to speak because people are listening. People are afraid. People are wondering what is happening in this world, particularly in America. People are wondering what's going to happen to the economy. What's going to happen to the things that I, I built so much security in. People are wondering about that. In church, we've got the message. This is our moment. This is our platform. God has given us this. God has led us. God is the one that is saying, now go speak. Don't operate in fear. Be strong and speak the voice of truth to people. Lead them, help them, encourage them so they would know the way. Jesus said, we don't need to be afraid. Fear only God. God has spoken. That's my third thing that I wanted to say. Here's my fourth thing that I want to say to us. And I love this. God has spoken that he will lead his people to victory. God has spoken. Andrew Cuomo can say that God has no place in his world. Andrew Cuomo can say that, you know what, in all of our human ingenuity, we did this. We've got this ability to lead our way through. He can say that all he wants to say it. And I'll disagree with him as strongly as I can disagree. Because our God is the only one that has the voice of truth that will lead his people to victory. It will not be some governor in a state. It will not be even a president over a land. It will not be our vice president as much as I have enjoyed and respected the way that he's led and, and uh, handled himself. It will not be a human leader. It won't be a pastor. A pastor doesn't have any ability to lead people to victory. It will be the voice of truth that will lead God's people forward. And he promises us, this is, this is based upon God. He promises us that he will lead his people to victory, and he will. This is where he says it. Here's the voice of truth right from his very word. God says to us, the ultimate enemy against us is death. And God says, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Why? Because there is no victory in death in the, for the people in Jesus Christ. There is no sting, ultimate sting of death. Death does not have the victory. The victory is in God himself. So if you're listening today, maybe you're not even a part of our church family. You decide to tune in. You don't know why you tuned in. You're just here listening. You don't know me. You don't have any idea who I am. God just led you in this moment to hear his voice. I'm calling you. Surrender your life to Christ. You're going to be given the opportunity 
in a moment how to do that. You'll be given a chance to, to connect with us so we can help you, and I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. You'll be given that chance to do that, and I'll tell you how. But you need to surrender your life to Christ. You don't need to be afraid. Jesus, God, is leading us to victory, and the victory is found in Him. He's calling you to surrender your life in this moment to Him. He's calling you to be a follower of Him. He's calling you to leave behind those things that have brought so much fear, so much confusion in your life. He's telling you, leave those behind. Follow the voice of truth, because the voice of truth is leading His people to victory. And God invites you. You are invited in this moment. All, all God's asking you to do, simply say in, in your home, wherever you're at, wherever you're watching this, God is asking you, will you say to me, I'm surrendering my life. Lord, it's no longer my own. I'm asking you to lead me in the victory that you promised. And I need it. I need your help. You've called me. I hear your voice. I want to follow you. I surrender. I say yes to Jesus. Will you do that? Will you do that? And if you will, in a moment, I'm going to tell you how. So allow us to follow up and help you and encourage you that. So that's the fourth thing I wanted to say to you, that God is going to lead his people in victory. God has also spoken, and this is the last thing I'm going to say. God has also spoken that human life is very fragile. It's very fragile. And natural things can be quickly lost. I never remember a time in my life when the things that I have so taken for granted throughout my life, just going to the grocery, I have never in my lifetime thought that I would be standing in line being uh, counted whether I could go into the grocery or not or I have to wait my turn. Never thought I'd see that happen. <clears throat> never thought I would see the time when the things that you just simply say, you know what, we're going to go out to eat. Let's just go to, you pick the restaurant. Let's go. We can't do that anymore. Things that were so much a part of our normal life. I never thought I would see the time in my ministry when I would be speaking through the camera only to an empty room. Things in the natural realm can change so quickly. Human life is so fragile. This is why God is calling His people we put our confidence in Him. We put our trust in following Jesus, the one that leads us to victory. And God is reminding us, don't put your priorities in the things that can change and are so quickly and things that are so fragile. Put your confidence, build your life on the things that are rock solid, the things that no corona can ever touch, things that this life cannot touch, and the things that in them God stores them and waits the, uh, for, uh, them for us in the eternal realm. And we will meet them there. And they will be beyond anything that you can imagine. God is offering this to us. And then he's not, not only in, in the eternity, but God is saying to us, build your life on me and, and following me now. And you can have a confidence and a joy in this life. And there's no crisis there's no disease ever going to take it. This is the promise of God. He tells us in Isaiah, God says to us, the gra this nat these are natural things, right? The, ga the grass withers, the flower fades. Here it is. I've been saying this, this is my entire message. <laughs> this is my entire message I've been talking to you. But the word of our God, the voice of truth, the things that God tells us will stand forever. So if you want to be a part of a forever, you don't want to be a part of some crisis that has got everybody so afraid and, and has people wondering where I'm going to put my strength at. If you want to be a part of something that's rock solid and forever, God says, I invite you to it because that's who I am. That's the voice of truth. So if God's been speaking to you and you want to say, yes, I, I want to be a follower of Christ, if you've joined us on the live.castingchurch.com, 
If you're there, you all you got to do is where it says raise your hand or right there on that button, you'll see that in the chat box. Just click on that box and you can, we can follow up. We can support you and help you in that decision you've made. Uh, we want to be a part of that with you. If uh, you've been listening and, and that's not you, you're, you're, not, you're not deciding to be a follower of Christ today, but it's hard right now. It's financially hard. It's hard as parents with young children. It's hard wondering, you know, am I going to be able to go back to work? Some people are ill. There's all kinds of pressures facing God's people right now. And God is calling us to turn to Him, to talk to Him, to allow Him to be our help. So you see, if you're looking at the live.castingchurch.com, you see in the bottom part of the page there, you see the prayer button. We have people that are gifted and they're called to pray for you. Just write out your prayer, uh, prayer uh, request. Allow them to pray with you, engage with you. Allow the things of God through them to speak into your life. Would you do that? Allow that a moment. Let, allow people to help you, encourage you, build you up. If you're not watching by live.castingchurch.com, but you still, you want to engage with us, you want to be a part of this ministry, you, you need prayer, you want to talk about your decision to follow Christ, I invite you to text uh, believe or the prayer that you need to 937-937-500-937-500-0406. If you'll text to 937-500-0406, we can connect with you. We can help you. We can partner with you in the things that are happening in your life so that you, you're not alone. You've got the support that you need. That's why we're here as a ministry. None of us do this alone. We all need each other, and God is calling us to that. So God has spoken to us. He's given us the voice of truth. I hope that you're going to take your Bible and you're going to look at those passages I gave you. You're going to dig into them. And you're too going to hear the voice of truth. And then as we do, people, we walk not by fear in this corona crisis. We walk not by fear. We walk by the solid faith in our God. And what an encouraging message to know this is who our God is. Our God is for us. He believes in us. He is our helper. He is our strength. And he wants to release that into your life. If you'll just say, yes, Lord, that's what I need. So I'm going to pray for us now. The team is going to take their place uh, on the platform again. Uh, if you uh, want to be a part of the ministry supporting what God is doing here, you want to honor the Lord in your giving because you recognize that uh, a part of releasing the fullness of God is being faithful in how we handle his dollars that he's given us. If you want to be a part of that, you can do that if you're at the live.castingchurch.com. That's going to be very simple in the chat box. You can just hit the button give. You'll be able to do that and uh, that'll make it very simple for you. Otherwise, you, uh, there's electronic opportunities to give uh, and if you're having trouble with that, I encourage you to uh, call the church office, call the church office, 937-678-9945, 678-9945, and help us get you connected so you can honor God in the way that you want to. Let me pray for us uh, in this time of offering. Lord Jesus, receive now what your people have, are giving. Thank you for this church family. They have been so faithful in uh, honoring you even in this difficult time. So Lord, uh, thank you for them. Thank you for what it means for this ministry. And may we be, uh, honor you in how we use the funds of your people to spread the message of victory and hope of you, our God, and to advance the ministry that you've given us through this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.